Hi everybody, I am very excited to uh, be here with us and uh, you know, I, I live in Amsterdam but I'm always super happy to, uh, to come to Italy for these kinds of events. And actually the title that Alfredo just suggested was a much better one, how to uh, run your community without violence. I think I should change that. Closer, better. Um, so, uh, my name is Fabio Tritico, my Twitter handle is a lot easier to pronounce, TicoFab. And uh, I would like to start with a very, uh, with a little fun story that goes about back about 20 years. Yes. So, in 1997, I was 16, and I was a huge fan of this Italian rock band called Lit Fiba. And uh, internet, maybe some of you remember, just arrived in Italy. Uh, there was Italia on, in, online, I think it was called, the first provider. And so I created this little website called Litfi Internet. And, I mean, you, you can see the 90s website, it makes, makes your eyeballs bleed, really. Uh, but back then it was super cool and new, and, um, and so I, I, you know, I had all these pictures and images and all of that, and I think that's when I started being a community manager, really, because there were simply no other Italian website about Litfiba. So I had a forum in it and people started, you know, talking on this forum and having flames and hating each other, especially when the FIBA split, the main singer left. Um, so I guess that's where I started being a community manager. And then eventually the FIBA themselves called me to work for them because they also needed an official website. Uh, so I also ended up running their uh, fans club and community for a few years. And um, you, you can see I'm a lot younger in these pictures. Um, th those years were definitely uh, a very rock and roll period of my life. And um, so, uh, um, th so th th that was an interesting mix of online, you know, the very birth of online communities, actually. And really feeling really privileged that I could uh, witness that. Uh, but also offline, of course, in concerts and, um, and meet up and meetings and stuff. Um, it's fun to see how things changed over time. But anyway, fast forward 20 years, and I, my heart is still in Italy, but I moved to Amsterdam, uh, where I've been for the past 10 years or so. And I work as a software engineer, but on the side, I also founded and run this community called Reactive Amsterdam, where we are about 2,000 members, and it's really a pretty much in real life focused uh, community. So we, we do very, very little interaction online and mostly it's about meeting and gathering um, and see, you know, talk or share share content. It's, it's totally passion driven. So it isn't really my job. Um, uh, I do it in, in free time and everybody that helps me organize, it's really a, it's really a grassroots, grassroots community, you could say, which makes it totally dependent on external sponsorship. Um, so uh, sponsors that provide venues or content or Pizza, actually, that's the most important thing they provide. Uh, so this is the context where I'm going to share my experience with you. And I want to share a few things, a few frustrations that I had along the way, with, together with some tips how I got out of it or coped with them. Uh, of course, this is my personal perspective, and I, in fact, I would love to hear yours after. I'm sure you guys' experiences are very different than mine. So uh, let's get started with the first one. The amazing no shows. <laughs> you, th you will always have no shows, at, at least me. And I, uh, I think um, it's something that we have to just cope with. And uh, the way I, I like to do uh, to, to to decrease them is well, first send a reminder every time before the event. I do that, like please update your RSVP on meetup.com. Uh, constantly refine my estimations. So, whereas in the beginning, maybe I was sure that there would be 50% attendance, uh, maybe at some time of the year it's maybe more. Uh, in Amsterdam it rains a lot, so if it rains, people don't go out. So, uh, constantly adjust my estimations over time. Uh, be conservative with food and drinks. I, I really hate wasting food and drinks, so i rather have my members starve a little bit, but not waste too much drinks and food. Um, and also, don't announce the event too early. Um, to me, that's really that's really important because the early, as soon as you announce, and lots of people just sign up to sort of block their spot, especially if there's limited space, uh, and then they sort of forget or book other things. So I don't, I never announce it too early. Uh, something that doesn't work for me uh, is charging fees. 
charging fees to me it only decreases attendance anymore uh, and further and uh, even schemas like yeah you give us five euros and then we'll give it back to you if you really come I, I didn't even venture there but, but so maybe it works for some of you um, and something else that doesn't work is invite people personally like I had one event I really wanted you know people to come and so I started like, emailing one of them hey dude what are you doing tonight come, come to my event and they say yeah yeah, yeah sure Thanks for inviting me personally, and then they don't come anyway. So um, very frustrating. But so so don't don't do that. At, at least I think. Second frustration: the members that actually do participate sometimes have the leech member syndrome, where they just come and take and don't give much back. Um, and I think. Um, it, it, you know, people I mean, sometimes come to my event and don't even say hello. Eat pizza, sit there, and then leave without saying goodbye. And, um, <laughs> you would probably have uh, some of that. Um, so the way I like to think about it is like try to find ways to extract forcefully from, from them some help. Um, in a sense that maybe I'm going to sit ne uh, stand next to the exit and then ask the feedback as they leave. Uh, so those are ways to sort of involve them a little bit and try and extract a little bit of participation from them. And yes, another one is actually don't focus on them too much. That's what I try to do. I mean, uh, I kind of accept that some people are like that, and maybe they're just shy. You know, maybe maybe they just don't want to interact. And so I just focus on my core group uh, for what concerns my personal energy and source of inspiration. And if they want to come and just uh, see the talk and, and leave, then that's fine too. Third one, the trouble finding help to run things. Um, because this is all passion driven and free time driven, it's hard to, uh, you know, to find someone who also wants to share that um, with the same commitment that I have. Uh, so for me, something that works is choose who to ask help for. Um, this really works. Uh, be specific in my calls for help. So if I go to someone and say, hey, you want to be my co-organizer? Then most people would say, what, what does that even mean? Um, whereas if you ask her, for instance, uh, will you help me with uh, you know, session recordings or uh, lately uh, make, make, help me make my meetup more inclusive, be sort of my diversity uh, expert, uh, then that works a lot better, especially coupled with purpose. If you make a call for help, just not I want you to do my grant work for me, but instead make it a purposeful call, that works a lot better. <coughs> and also try to make it scoped in time. Uh, try and make sure that the, uh, the help for your the help you're asking for is not some you know life threatening thing that you're gonna ask. Um, moving on, this one is great. The disappearing co-organizer. Uh, even when you are able to find help, uh, sometimes what they get is that they instead of saying, "No, man, I can't do this," they just slowly disappear, like and you, you don't see them anymore. Um, and I, uh, so, well, I think the thing what the previous slide said applies here too. Uh, based on collaboration on clear terms, scope it, uh, what you really want from it. Um, and, and, but, but, you know, scope expectations clearly. So I also run a conference in Amsterdam called Kubernetes Community Days. And we are a big group of people. And what works is give specific tasks to some people and make sure that they don't feel, you know, that they feel pressured enough to do it, but not pressured enough to run away. It, it's, it's, a, it's a hard balance. Uh, I think you need to find your own. Um, another one, be empathic. I think this is the actually crucial one. If someone disappears and doesn't tell you anything, sure, it hurts your feelings, but he probably has his own reasons. His, He's gone, he, you know, he's got stuff going on in his life that you don't know about. Uh, so in the end, he's really embracing other people's um, issues, like um, situations, even when they don't explain that to you directly. Um, this is a key thing, I think, in all of my frustrations. The disappearing professional DevRel. Now, DevRel, uh, for those who are not in tech, um, it means like comes from developer relations and there are people who are maybe work for a big company or big brand and in fact their job is sort of interact with communities 
And, and so when they do disappear, that's slightly more frustrating than when you know, your, your volunteer friend disappears. Um, I have one example with one big company that I'm not going to mention which one, um, that just disappeared. And so I, I didn't know if I had a venue anymore. And, and I didn't know if I had a speaker anymore. And um, this person you know, just, just totally vanished. Um, well, so lesson one, don't rely on that one single person. Try to make it more distributed, your approach. Um, be quick in finding someone else to ask to. So I started mailing other people in this company, and s some of the other people do, did reply. Um, or, or maybe, yeah, look some, somewhere else altogether. Uh, instead of clinging on to one offer that uh, it, it seems that it's not materializing anymore, just, just keep going. Um, and again, be empathic. Because you know, even these, if these people, it's actually their job to be after you and help you, maybe they also have uh, other things going on. And so, yeah, swallow down frustration and, uh, and, and be empathic in that sense. <coughs> the non-cooperating employer. I, I love this one. So when, when, uh, when you have like, Maybe, maybe you work at a company, and I, I was doing that. I was working as a software, uh, kind of more of a software manager kind of thing at some company. Uh, and I was trying to get my, you know, my developers involved in community, activity, in community activities. So go to conferences, uh, you know, meet up, share what you have. And then my employer was like actively discouraging this. Um, because, oh, you know, that takes time, and we have you know, deadlines and things like that. Um, so I had to do a hard, it was a hard job to make them understand that actually learning and growing is the second best currency for employees. Um, some, some would argue it's maybe the first, I, I would still argue is the second, uh, but I'm open for a discussion there. Um, um, and so you, you, you sort of try to do that, it also has to do with retention and things like that. Uh, but also try to understand what they really are after. An employer might have different <coughs> goals for the community engagement of their employees than what yours are. Uh, maybe an employer doesn't see it as cool, but maybe uh, they see it as branding ways if their employees go to a conference, for instance. Um, and maybe they don't know it quite yet. So try and talk to, try, try and figure out. And I think that then you have a bit of a negotiation uh, argument there. And, and respect them. So in the end, I managed to make, for instance, my employer host meetups, which means for them, it's kind of a burden because someone from the company needs to stay there over time and work and be there you know, when pizza comes and there to close the office at nine at night. Um, and maybe their goal is to collect CDs for recruitment purposes. Uh, not really what I had in mind, but it's their goals. And I think it's, it's fair. Um, so embrace, try to understand their goals and, and respect them, and, and then it becomes a real win-win situation, I think. Um, something, something, something funny, though, here is you, maybe you've worked on these points and you sort of massaged this community idea into your employer, and then what you result with is the fake cooperating employer. Um, someone who says, yes, uh, sure, we embrace community right now. And, uh, and, and, and then they behave just like before. And then they start, again, reducing conference budgets or whatever. Uh, well, what to do here? What was the second bullet point in the previous slide? <coughs> Does anybody remember that? No. Oh. Um, it was try to understand what they're really after. Because again, they're going to say no to many things. But then once you find what they really want, that's your way into their, their minds and into making your workplace a more community-friendly place. And, and then maybe one day you'll get to become the, you know, the real cooperating employer. That's your, that's your, um, that, that's your, that's your final goal. Um, we have a couple of frustrations left <laughs> to, to cover. Um, the shameless market here. So um, sometimes. As you know, I have this 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 community is about yeah again two thousand people, and so it, it, you know it's kind of attractive to people who want to promote promote their events, promote their apps, promote their whatever. 
and uh, and so they approach me and they they go like oh sure this topic is so relevant to your crowd where maybe it's completely different than what we usually do um, but again don't let frustration take over um, you know they're doing their job after all empathy back to empathy right here um, in fact, uh, still, if you can get something out of it, some, sometimes, uh, a, a while ago, maybe last year, uh, someone approached me from London, they were running a conference that was on a totally different topic than what we usually do, uh, but then I found out that this person was also involved in the, in the organization of some other conference in Belgium, which was closer to what we do, so try and find out if you, know, if, if, if you can still get something out of these people that approach you. Um, and then finally, but eventually, feel free to stop replying to their emails. Okay. I think there, there's a thin line that we, we, you know, personally, everybody knows where that is. Um, then this one, I really, really, really feel it. At some point, I am so involved in my community that I stop going to other communities. I stop participating in other communities. Simply, maybe they're cool, but like my sort of community energy has depleted. Uh, towards my community, and, and I stopped going in other communities, where, which in fact is, is a very bad thing. Um, so, well, start telling yourself everything you told your, your employer a few slides back uh, about the importance of community, um, because in, in the end, really, if you stop going to other communities, you, you, you sort of lose touch with, with the world around you, in a sense, to the same world you live in. So. Um, and then, yeah, find those hidden energies. It rains outside, especially if you're in the Netherlands, it rains all the time. So you don't want to go out. Um, and then, again, but sometimes also feel free to stay home and watch Netflix. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're, we're all allowed to do that every now and then, but uh, not too often. <laughs> um, the, I think we're, we're at the last one, which is maybe controversial, is the joys of meetup.com. Uh, you know, like there's this entire WeWork thing going on, and so maybe uh, it's a little uh, unfair to talk about meetup.com, but it's a great website, but sometimes it is a bit frustrating. Um, text formatting is gone from the event description and things like that. Um, so what I, what I do in, instead is make a disproportionate use of emojis. If you see my events, it looks like a Christmas tree. Uh, there's so many emojis and colors all around the place. Um, find alternative ways to run your group. So there's not only meetup.com, uh, there's you know, many other things, uh, many other ways to aggregate people. Uh, but we, 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 which really scares me though, like I have built my entire community of meetup.com and I don't want to move, I'm afraid of losing people. Um, but uh, yeah, I suppose you guys should be a little more flexible than, than I am. Um, and I think this was everything I wanted to share with you. I would love, if we have some time, I'm not sure if we do, uh, to hear maybe what are your uh, frustrations and what are, what are the, the difficulties that you guys encounter with, with your communities. And uh, that was it for me. Thank you very much.